<laughs> All right, team. Welcome. Hey, it's that time again. Uh, we have a couple of my good friends here from the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Veterans Village, San Diego. It is the month of the military child. You've heard it before many times on TV, or maybe someone told you, oh, I was an army brat. I was a Navy brat, whatever. You know, what does that mean? I'm a brat. No, that just means that you were, um, you know, a, a military child. And this is the month of the military child. So please welcome back to the show. Sherry Finney is here. What's, what's going on, Sherry? Hi. And her partner in crime, Jenny Lynn Stroop is here as well. Hi, thanks for having us, Derek. What's up, ladies? Okay. So who wants to tell me, you know, what the month of the military child really means. And then we'll get into sort of the clinic and what you guys are doing and different services and resources that are available. Well, I'll go, Jalen. You go. I'll, go. I'll go. As a mom of uh, military children, month of the military child is simply designed to highlight that the kids serve too. Um, in a military family, a lot of people recognize the service member as someone who serves, but kids move and do all the things. Um, go to all the duty stations and pack up and move uh, the same way that a service member does. And so this month is really to highlight their strength and resilience. Um, they're often called dandelions because though they don't have long roots, they can grow anywhere. So we are um, here at our clinic at the Cohen Clinic at VVSD. We are happy to have our military kids as part of our client base and provide services for them and their families. And so like, what are some of those services. Give me an example for all the active duty members um, and, or sorry, and um, you, the clinic really focuses on more like 9-11, right, uh, era veterans. Um, what, what are some of those services for people who might be uh, interested in or who have kids and they're, 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 they're dealing with some of those things? So you're right. We do see post 9-11 era service members. Um, we actually, as of April 1st, started seeing active duty service members for individual therapy. Um, we also see veterans and their families as well. So as far as the kids go, we provide individual treatment for kids as young as seven currently because we're still doing uh, telehealth. Uh, for the foreseeable future. And then we also provide services to kids through family therapies um, where we would bring the whole family in. And that's really meant as something uh, to use really for reintegration and or separation issues um, that come up that are pretty standard <clears throat> in military life. And I'll let Sherry talk more of the clinical aspect of that. Sherry, you're up. Sure, thank you. So we also see kids younger than seven, between four and seven, with their parents on via telehealth too, because there's sometimes some things we can do to help the parents cope with uh, a pandemic and parenting. Um, the family therapy, we are looking to re-enter and like have click kids and families in the clinic again soon. So we'll keep you posted on that. And then as far as the adolescents and, and as young as yeah, seven and up, we see them individually, um, just like we're talking right now, but through a different platform. That's terrific. So I am not a, um, I was never a military child and, but I did move a lot. And so I'm, I'm a military grandchild. So pretty much <laughs> all of my grandpas were in, in the world war. And, um, so, well, actually both of my grandpas were, all of them were. Um, but you know, I did move a lot as a kid and even though I was mostly in the same area, you know, it's, it's a new school, it's new mm -hmm. friends, it's a new environment, it's a new playground, a new routine. Um, there are a lot of things that, that sort of, I felt like it was a good experience for me to get to know lots of different types of people and to know how to sort of integrate into a new situation. But it also seemed seemingly comes somewhat natural to me. I could totally see where certain people would really, really not like that or would really, really struggle with that. And I could see that being something where there would need to be a lot of potential help or maybe some after effects that people are dealing with. What are some of the things for the veterans out there in San Diego area and really all over the country is this, you know, this movement that you guys have is, is really everywhere. Um, what, what are some of those signs? When, when does someone, when does a parent know that they should be talking to their kids 
about getting help with X or Y? So some, I'll take that one. So some of the indicators can be just a different mood that you notice in your child, a different a change in appetite, a change in sleeping patterns, isolating, some of the things that you would notice in an adult, but also with kids, it can be a little bit, it can present a little bit more as just irritability or maybe falling behind in schoolwork. But what I tell most of my parents is if they think something's wrong, if they're a little worried, it's worth the phone call to the clinic that you have on the screen just to get an assessment because one thing is it's going to calm the parent's anxiety, which also will help the child. And if there is an issue that early treatment will help, then let's get them in there sooner. Got it. Do you have anything you want to add to that, Jenny Lynn? I do. Well, um, you know, my military children are currently almost 10 and 11 and a half. And several years ago, we noticed some of the things she was talking about. We had had, we had sustained back-to-back -back deployments as a family, a cross-country move. And for us, um, we really started to notice the difference in our kids kind of with each next thing. Like they handled the first mm -hmm. deployment, then we had another deployment. We handled that one okay. Um, but then they're, uh, then we moved and it was like with each subsequent add on, um, there tended to be more, more signs and symptoms from them. For them, it was kind of the regression in behaviors, you know, um, not necessarily my kids, but uh, we have known children to, you know, if they're potty trained, like kind of revert back to that pre potty training stage. If they slept all night, reverting back to not sleeping all night. So it's, for us, we noticed some regression behaviors like that. Um, and also like an amped up, um, quick to anger, quick to pitch a fit, kind of very toddler behavior, even though my kids were in elementary school. Um, those were some things we noticed that alerted uh, my family to getting my kids help. And so and that kind of help is that, is it like a counseling? Is it, um, you know, a, a routine change? Um, do, do they, do you work with the parents first to say, Hey, try this or try that? Or do you bring the kids in? How does that, how does that go for people who might be curious about that, but want to know but they're, they may be afraid of what the first step looks like. They don't want to throw their kids in the deep end. So it usually starts with a phone call and we'll screen both, both the mom or the dad, the caregiver that's calling. And then if the kids are old enough and able to talk on the phone or, or do a, a tablet, we will screen them and then we'll create an individualized client centered treatment plan and we'll figure it out together. Sometimes the kids have like nine, 10 or 11, they'll have an individual part with a, with a therapist, but the mom and dad will come in at the beginning and again at the end. Um, it just depends on where the child is at and what target, what, what behaviors they want to target and also the strength of the relationship with the caregiver. So, like I said, it's just, it's individual for each person. And it also depends on what the kid and the caregiver and possibly siblings want. So, and the other thing I just, oh, go ahead. No, go, go right ahead. I just want to point out one more thing was that um, it, it, you don't have to wait until it's a problem to call the clinic or any provider because it's, it's the same thing. If you went to the dentist, you wouldn't wait till you had a cavity to call. You'd go and you'd get those six months needs. And so I, I think if we can change the stigma around mental health and have it look like, let's do something proactively, let's do it before it gets really bad. I think that'd be a great message to get out to people, especially parents right now. Terrific. Terrific message. In fact. Um, so what does that initial intake look like then? Let's look at, let's, let's talk about that because I feel like that's always the biggest hindrance for people is they get it in their head that that first step is going to be really embarrassing or really intrusive or whatever. And they kind of talk themselves out of it right at the last second. Um, what is that first step? Is it just a, an intake phone consultation? And then you set up the next steps. Like, can we help explain that to people what it really looks like? So, so they can have some, some ease about the process. Sure. So it really just looks like a phone call to the clinic and then Either if that person's ready, if, if our intake people are ready right away, you will get an appointment with them right then. If not, we'll call you back and we'll figure out a time. And it's usually for families, like let's just say it's one kiddo, it's a 30 minute assessment and it's not hard. It's, it's simple questions, questions you do probably already know the answer to. And then after that, you're going to get a biopsychosocial appointment and that's going to be about between an hour and a half. And that's more tedious than it is scary 
And then after that, you get assigned your clinician and that the real work begins. And I don't think there's ever, once you make that call, it's a pretty smooth process. And we have an incredible staff that knows military culture, knows exactly what you've gone through and are there to help and are really, really make it a smooth process. Yeah, it's a good point you make that it's, this is a safe place. People should know that mm-hmm. this isn't, you know, you're not being targeted by some, uh, you know, home war, you know, car warranty company or something like that. It's not what this is. No. You know, this, <laughs> this is help, you know, and it's there for you. Um, you made a good point though, Sherry, and I wanted to, um, to talk about that, uh, being proactive. What are some of the things that we can maybe put out as advice or tips or tricks or things to pay attention to for me? Maybe people who haven't experienced a problem yet, um, but, you know, have military children, what are some of the things they can do activities or, um, just, just good best practices that should be happening, mm-hmm. um, to help maybe prevent some of these things, um, ultimately. Jenny Lynn, you want to start? You want me to take that one? Sure. As a mom, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> As a mom and, and, and a military mom, um, you know, for us, it really, it, it started with making the phone call to, uh, get our children help from a licensed clinician. Um, and through that process, we learned things that we could do as parents, like, um, having a routine, uh, is really helpful. Um, you know, having like, we actually have posted in our house, a calendar and times for things because it helps our kids stay on track and know what's coming next in a world that often doesn't have a, we know what's coming next, having something that is, Um, concrete like that is very helpful in my house. Uh, Let's see, what else have we done? We did some work with our children's therapists. Uh, Like Sherry said, each each of our sessions is individualized for the individual client. Um, And that was our experience as well. And so my husband and I both did some work with each of our kids individually to kind of strengthen that parent child bond, which inevitably helps the child with their own uh, therapy and with just um, like being able to talk to their parent in a way about the things that they're feeling, Uh, especially military families where one or both parents may be gone quite often. It's hard to build those trust bonds. And so having someone who's licensed to purposefully help with that was very helpful for us. Got it. Sounds to me like communication is a big piece of that there. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, and really, I mean, unfortunately we're not inherently born with how to do that. Well, um, some folks are better than others, but for us, for our family, having, communication skills was really helpful. Um, when you live that long apart from one another, communication is often one of the first things that kind of goes. Um, and so to have someone help us get that back on track was, was really helpful for us. You know, it makes me think about, um, just all the years prior to technology, you know, now you have the chance to FaceTime and some of those things. I mean, think about, just 20 years ago, you know, some of the people that, um, maybe even that you're seeing pre iPhone, pre FaceTime, you go on deployment. We'll see in 10 months or whatever, you know, literally not, not see them. Um, and so now you have a few other different types of communication devices. So maybe some of the people who had served were able to stay in a little bit better communication. They're able to see one another's faces every once in a while. And that, that was probably a huge bonus, um, I imagine. Mm-hmm. But think about back in the day. Wow, that, that was crazy. Because I think, you know, <laughs> communication is is key. And I can tell you, you know, I have 50% custody of my, uh, my eldest. And when she's gone, I'm, it hurts my heart. I mean, it's a, like a piece of me is, is gone when she's not here. And she comes back home today, thank God. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, so just this, this thought process of being a thousand or 2000 or 3000 miles away from my kids is crazy. Um, mm-hmm. I just can't imagine what, you know, the, the torment in, in the hearts of some of our service members. And that does, you know, that can, um, you know, create things down the road that, you know, may need to be sort of reconciled or, or mended back together. Um, as you know, uh, kids will deal with things in different ways, right? 
And that's what this whole process is for. So you can kind of get to the bottom of that, uncover it, um, figure out what the solution is. And the month of, and we're in April, month of the military child. <laughs> that's what we're in right now. So this is what we're talking about. Um, Sherry, tell me, um, you know, what are some best practices from your standpoint? Um, I know you let Jenny Lynn kind of take the, the lead on that one from what you've experienced on the clinical side. So on the clinical side, it's changed because as everything has, because of the pandemic, the severity of the symptoms that, that, that as young as nine were seeing is a little bit more intense than it was probably, you know, pre pandemic, but we're also seeing an increase in, in, in parents calling for help either with themselves or with their kids. And we're seeing an increase. We're about 48% families now, rather than, um, and I think that's up about 10%. And clinically wise, we're also seeing a lot of kids as young as seven who can sit and talk through a Zoom, through tele do telehealth, which I don't know that pre-pandemic and pre-learning online, they would have been able to do that. Like some of the things, some of the skills the kiddos have are amazing. I had one little client that, um, she just she got better and and was able to enjoy our sessions and she would pretend to glitch and like freeze on me and she'd be get me every <laughs> single time she was so she had it down pat that's hilarious uh, well i think that you know definitely there is a different it's a different world that we're in now you know post pandemic if you will it presents different things that are positive, also different problems and things that we'll have to work on for solutions are concerned. What else should we know about guys um, that we have you here? I mean, whether it's month of the military child or whether it's something from, um, you know, Cohen clinic, what, what else should we know about and share with our folks here today? So one thing I, I wanted to highlight was our parent company, Cohen veterans network. Um, and we'll maybe Jane will put that, the um, web address in there. They have a whole site, a whole, page for um, resources and events. And we are also going to be having an event on uh, April 15th, which is Purple Up Day. And I will pass it to Jenny Lynn to talk a little bit more about that. So our event on Purple Up Day is honoring military families called We Heart Our Mill. And it's really just the Cohen Clinic at VVSD's way of giving back to the active duty military family community. We're doing a drive-through event uh, with lots of community partners. Um, given folks dinner and fun things to do with their family to really help strengthen that family bond um, outside the clinic and let people know that we can help them strengthen their family bond within the clinic. And to add on to what Sherry was saying about our parent company, Cohen Veterans Network, they actually have a page dedicated to um, resources for military children. Uh, and like Sherry said, we'll put that uh, in the show notes uh, for this for you guys. They also have a wonderful resource um, where you can watch webinars or uh, other videos that people from our clinic here in San Diego have done, but also from the clinics across the network on a variety of topics from uh, your own anxiety as a parent to helping kids through anxiety and everything in between. We also have a wonderful stress uh, stress kit available on the website that is a series of videos that help kind of walk you through your own um, reducing your own stress. So we will definitely put our parent company's website uh, up when this uploads. That's awesome. Well, I th thank you guys so much for that. Yeah, we talked about your uh, event the last time you guys were here. And I really appreciate all the work that you're doing for the veteran community here in San Diego. It really means a lot to be able to know that there are resources there um, that can help our veteran families right here in San Diego. So many of them right here. And um, I just, I'm, I'm so thankful that we have the opportunity to have this resource and also the platform to share it and let people know about it. I've got some really great feedback from people who are watching this, um, you know, these segments and they're, they're saying, hey, you know, we had no idea about this. Wish we'd have known. 10 years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it, it, we're, we're doing, we're making an impact here. We're getting the word out. Uh, thank you guys so much for making the time. I just wanted to, here, I'll get you both on the same screen so I can give you a, oh, get me out of there. Hold on a second. <laughs> Let me get this right. I'm going to give now you guys a proper send off here. How about this? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> we're happy to be here. I know. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And hey team, let's make sure we share 
this video, okay? Whether it's with, you know, veterans that you personally know, uh, whether it's on your own page, let's do our part to get the word out. Don't want you to send any money, not asking for anything like that, just to share, maybe an email, someone you know, a text message with a link. It's all we're asking. Let's get the word out. Let our veterans know their support. There's resources right here in San Diego for them. And really, and frankly, all over the country, you know, with this network. So let's make people aware. Thank you guys. Share this video and we'll see you again soon.